Welcome back to Hormones and Body. In this lesson, we're going to be covering male anatomy and the difference between male hormones and women's hormones. Just as we had a chart for the woman's reproductive system, we have one for men as well. So we have everything labeled again, and you can kind of glance at this and go through it. But I'm just gonna go ahead and explain a little bit about each of the organs. So you can see the testicles on the bottom there, and these are a pair of organs which produce sperm daily, and the main male reproductive hormone, testosterone. The epididymis to the left is a coiled tube attached to each testicle where sperm mature approximately 75 days and are stored until ejaculation. The scrotum is the fleshy sac containing the testes and the epididymis located outside of the main body cavity. Muscles in the scrotum contract or relax, bringing the testes closer to the body when when cold or further when warm, helping to regulate the temperature of the testes for optimal sperm production. The vas deferens is one of two ducts beginning at the epididymis, which transports mature sperm from the epididymis to the urethra. The vas deferens starts at the epididymis, loops around the bladder, and ascends through the seminal vesicles and prostate gland before emptying into the urethra. The seminal vesicles help to nourish and transport sperm, and seminal fluid is a lubricative fluid containing sperm, which nourishes and transports the sperm through the urethra and into the vagina. This fluid is alkaline to neutralize the acidic pH of the urethra and the vagina. The penis is composed of a spongy erectile tissue that becomes engorged with blood during sexual arousal. So this is the male organ for both intercourse and urination. These two functions can never occur simultaneously as the tube leading from the bladder gets blocked off during erection. So if you're ever worried about him urinating in you, it's not possible when he's erect. And if you were wondering why it takes so long to go to the bathroom after, that would be why. The urethra is the tube carrying urine from the bladder to the outside of the body. And in men, the urethra travels through the penis and also joins with the vas deferens, conveying seminal fluid from the vas deferens to the outside of the body. So when we compare female hormones and male hormones, there's some similarities. We both have FSH, LH, we both have testosterone, and men even have estrogen as well. It's just in different levels. So for women, the brain signals ovaries to develop an egg and then produce the main female hormones, estrogen and progesterone. And for males, the brain signals the testes to produce sperm and the main male hormone, testosterone. So a woman's estrogen and progesterone fluctuate on an average of a 29 day rhythm and women have nine times more estrogen and two times more progesterone than men. And men have more stable levels of testosterone, which fluctuates on a 24 hour rhythm. Men have 20 times more testosterone than women. Women and men have different patterns of hormonal activity throughout their life. A woman experiences hormone fluctuations with the development and the release of an egg each cycle and is only fertile for a matter of days each cycle. Throughout a woman's life, she may experience fluctuating fertility as she moves in and out of times of pregnancy or breastfeeding. And after the age of 35 to 40, fertility starts to decline until reaching menopause around age 50. Now, what this perimenopause stage will look for you between 35 and 50 is really gonna depend on your genetics and your health. Many people can go on to have healthy pregnancies throughout their 40s. Men, on the other hand, are constantly fertile, producing millions of sperm daily, although it takes 70 to 90 days for sperm to mature. His hormones fluctuate slightly on a daily basis and a monthly basis, but remain pretty consistent over the years. At approximately 50 years old, a man's fertility starts to slowly decline. And that's all for this lesson. It's another quick one. We're going to move into module three and introduce the biomarkers to you.